except uh, the old style bulbs, the incandescent ones. I've got a couple here, a standard uh, tungsten filament and a halogen. They're taking uh, just under, or just about 77 watts. Right? If I plug in a compact fluorescent, standard compact fluorescent in here, that'll put about another 10 watts on. So that, that one bulb is taking much less than those two. If I plug in one of these LEDs, in here, just stick it in there, it barely goes up at all on that. So that LED is using less than 1% of these old style bulbs. So it makes no sense to, to burn those when you can use those. A little bit more expensive, but they've got a long life. So really, everybody should be making sure they're using the latest LEDs. <laughs> You've got the biggest grin on your face. What was that like? Too easy, that did, didn't it? That was brilliant. I've never ridden one of these uh, sort of bikes before, and um, you can really feel the, the power, the, the, the extra power it gives you. And it's completely silent, so completely you can yeah. you can pretend yeah. you're the pedal. You're it's actually you pedaling it. Well, you are. And you are pedaling, and you get that resistance that you, you get with a normal bike, but it's, um, you know, it, it just kicks in and it seems very, very smooth actually. So, yeah. so in terms of the towpath, we are fundraising to try and uh, get the towpath upgraded. There's uh, lots of sections have actually become very, very narrow and overgrown. The race course development is coming on stream and they are releasing developer funding. And so we're looking, we're getting the them to contribute to upgrading this section here and in towards uh, where the Victoria Park is in here. And is this encouraging people to cycle to work in Newbury? It, it's the section within the, within the, t the town here is very much a commuter as well as a shopper and a leisure route. But these routes here are showing the, the cycle route that we're doing between Hermitage and Hampstead Norries, the oldest used railway line. So this is going to open in December I think. Uh, construction sort of underway at the moment. We've secured uh, with West Berkshire Council, we've secured funding through Highways England to try and uh, open this up and address the sort of severance issues caused by the motorway. Um, but it'll be a lovely traffic free route. I don't know if you saw the Stacey Dooley programme on BBC Two about 18 months ago. And in that programme, it was called Fashion's Dirty Secrets, and she was talking about the impact of fashion globally on our environment and the fashion industry is the second largest planetary polluter after coal and gas. And this week I heard from Oxfam that the amount of new clothing that we buy in the UK alone has the equivalent carbon output to flying around the world 900 times every single month. So I think we're becoming more and more aware that the way we buy clothes is just simply not sustainable. And one of the things that I do is talk to my clients about how we can create more sustainable wardrobes, things that are made to last, things that we love and things that give us confidence. And one of the things we can do is buy, is to wear more of what we already have already. Just by extending the life of our clothes by nine months, can reduce our wastewater and carbon footprint by as much as 30%. There's no downside to shopping second hand. You're recycling, you're getting a bargain, you're finding something you love that's great quality, like this Pops jacket, for example. Um, and you're just helping to extend the life of that item of clothing. So check out your local charity shop. It's a great place to find something that you will absolutely love. I'm uh, Lawrence Woodward. Um, I was um, the co-founder and director for over 30 years of a thing called Elm Farm Research Centre, an organic research centre. I started farming organically in 1975 and we created our research centre because of the question, how do we feed ourselves when the oil runs out? Those of you old enough to remember the 70s know we had lots of oil crisis. Um, uh, um, three day week and so on. So oil was a big issue uh, then. And we kind of developed the question into how do we feed ourselves on a world of finite and, dimin and diminishing resources. And over the years through research and through communication we tried to get that concern and message across and we failed dismally. There's a simple answer to how we deal with this on a world of, in a world of finite and diminishing resources is we don't, we can't. We cannot deal with it 
why we continue to live a lifestyle and run businesses in the way that we do. It's simply not possible. So in terms of, in answer to Freya's question, how do we spread the message? First of all is, what is the message? It's all very well governments making declarations of, we have a climate emergency. What are they going to do about it? As Greta said in the, in the email, declarations are fine. What are we going to do about it? And nobody's owning up to it. We're not getting across the message that we have to fundamentally change how we live our lives and organize our society. Getting that message across is, is not um, easy because there's not one simple message. There's different messages to different generations. What I say to people of my generation, as Greta Thunberg said, is actually we've stolen our children's future. The number of conversations I have, which get very tetchy when I say to people, you tell me you'll do anything for your grandchildren and children, but actually you don't change your lifestyle. So what's that make you? A liar, hypocrite, whatever. Well, that message doesn't go down very well. But unless people who are my generation start listening to that message, nothing will change because the power won't change. As far as children are concerned, it's very difficult. My, I talked to, I asked this question to my grandkids who were at school in London, and they love the school strikes. And I thought, yeah, okay, this is just a way of getting out of school. But amazingly, they told me in detail about climate crisis. They knew when they were interested. For them to maintain that interest means their teachers have got to maintain the interest. So the local authorities, the people who run the schools, have got to support the teachers who are willing to support that ongoing message. Because it's not just one message, and it's not just for one time. It's an ongoing thing. In terms of how we do it, talking, communication, talking to everybody, and so on, not ducking it is important. I disagree with Richard. We cannot afford to go, out, go along with the grain of public opinion. We have to change the grain of public opinion. That means going against it. So it's been an amazing day. We've had so many people, everyone has been so happy, it's been such a success. We had, I don't know, about 100 volunteers here. We had all sorts of storeholders, talks, so much interest in recycling, in repurposing what we can do. And this just shows what we can do as a community. Just brilliant and I hope this inspires.